Hi everybody, it is Max Macintoshes back again for another video. This week I am renovating another Willow Creek lot. This lot I am renovating this week is called Daisy Hovel. It's a simple starter home that I just wanted to renovate because I didn't like the layout of it. I thought it was really strange. Like the kitchen is just in the middle of the floor plan and there's like walls around it. You think you'd want it to be opened up. I just didn't really understand it. And I didn't like the roof either. I mean, it was fine, but I didn't love it. So I changed the roof and I changed the layout and I changed a lot. And I added a little bump out to just cause. And it was still a starter in the end, so that was good. And I kept a base game, of course, like the last one because it's in Willow Creek, so I might as well just keep it base game. And I like to keep stuff base game anyway, just so it's more accessible. When I first recorded this, I tried to do like an in-person, end-time build, whatever you want to call it, where I'm talking as I build, but I just can't talk while I build. Like, I just can't think and function. So when I played back the recording for myself, there was hardly any talking done. So I just had to scrap it because it was pointless, and I just figured do another voiceover. It's a lot easier for me to do this. I should really just always do voiceovers because I just I don't know how people can talk while they're building I just can't even do that function at all I can barely think so like I just can't do it and when I this one especially I couldn't figure out what I want to do with the floor plan so then I made it even harder to talk here in the front I got rid of all of the landscaping and I accidentally deleted the mailbox so that, that's unfortunate because I forgot to add it back in, so I'm so sorry wherever it auto places. It's already been on the gallery for a few hours, so I can't really add it now, but it'll just have to be tough. And maybe in the future I'll remember a mailbox. I usually don't forget a mailbox, so I don't know why I forgot it here. Maybe it was because I accidentally deleted with the landscaping, so I just didn't even think about it. But usually I'm better than that. I'm sorry, I'll be better in the future. I did some simple landscaping here in the front though, just for something exciting to look at. I didn't want to spend too much on the landscaping because I wanted to spend most of the money for the inside of course, but I did a little bit to spruce it up a bit just to make it pretty. And then we have my favorite tree of course on the side there that you can see and move the trash can to the back. Did have a trash can in this build though, so there's that going for me. I didn't put one inside because we didn't really have the money but there's the one outside, so it's fine, no big deal. On this porch out back, I really would have liked to put like that really short fence into a design to have a little covering over it, but that just wasn't in the budget. But if you download this house, get a little money, could do that. I would do that if I was playing in this house. But, you know, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really change anything about the house because it's purely decoration. But that was something I wanted to do. But since it's a starter home, I could not. And this little bump out, I liked, I thought it was a good idea. I wanted more space and I thought we could afford it, but it was such troubling times trying to figure out how to lay it out with the bump out, especially like before it was kind of hard enough to lay it up with the bump out. I kind of just made it harder on myself, but I guess that's fun. We like a little bit of a challenge. Easy is boring. And there was some like expensive stuff, like the doors I think are kind of expensive and there was more expensive flooring in this house and so I downgraded a bit just to have cheaper stuff. I mean it looks just as good so I don't know why they spent more expensive stuff. You can see me fiddling with the floor plan a lot. Even with the sped up version I still cut out quite a bit of the floor plan because it was such a mess. You can see that I left a lot of it in still but I spent ages on it. Like I'd swear it was at least 20 minutes. I just couldn't figure out how to lay it out and I ended up making the bump out a little bigger I think in the end to make the parents bedroom be over there because I didn't know what to do with that bump out. I kind of just added it with no thought process of what I was going to do with it, which is not a smart idea. And then here you can see me add a room right there by the front door ends up being a bedroom. And then originally I was going to do a bathroom like right across the hall from it. But in the end, I don't stick with that. You'll see it turns into another bedroom. So this house has quite the upgrade in my opinion because it started out with one bedroom, one bathroom, a starter, and it ends with three bedrooms, one bathroom, but still a starter. So you get th two more bedrooms with three bedrooms total, and it can fit four sims. I think that's 
really good. That's quite an upgrade, especially if you like want to start a family right away or you start the game with already having multiple sims. I mean, it doesn't even have to be kids in these bedrooms. It could be adults, young adults, elders. It's very versatile. So there's room for four sims, and I think that's nice. Here you can see me finally changing it into a bedroom and adding a bathroom in the back by the kitchen. Honestly, the only reason I made the third bedroom, because it was only going to be two bedrooms to start, but I decided to make the third bedroom because there was too much space in this house, which is because of the bump out, so that's my bad, but it gave me another bedroom in the end, so not really my bad, my good. But yeah, the bathroom is right there by the kitchen, kind of stinky, I suppose, but in a small house, you just gotta suffer with the bathroom being where it is. And I had to use the tragic base game counters. I know it's so stupid, but honestly, I would love if they could at least give us better swatches for these counters. If they're not going to give us better cheap counters. Because all the swatches are just, like, not good. Like, these, I guess I can stand to look at. But, like, why did they pick the swatches they did? Did they do it to make us suffer? Because it kind of feels that way. It The house turns out kind of very blue. But... Blue is a nice color, so it's nothing too terrible. I ended up fitting a TV in there. I almost used the Penguin TV, is that what it is? The Child's TV, just to save some money, but I decided on that little box one. You could size it up if you wanted to make it like a big, bigger TV, but I thought that was a little obnoxious, so I left it small. The bathroom is pretty basic in this house because we didn't have any money to do anything. Toilet, shower, sink, and a mirror. But that's fine you'll survive and when you get more money you can just make it prettier than i make it it's just a starter so it's nothing super fancy but it works and i think it's very nice to have this much space i made a starter once that i think had four bedrooms and like two bathrooms fortunately there wasn't much furniture in there because the house is so big but i think it's really nice when starters are that big or at least have a lot of bedrooms because it helps you fill it in and I think it even when it's like not that full I think it looks better than EA starters or at least I think so that's why I changed it to that I don't know the way EA builds their houses like I'm just always curious to why they made the decisions they did like I get you want to like build into it and grow into your house but they still they make questionable decisions on my part that's just my opinion I don't know I don't know of anyone that's ever said, oh yeah, I love EA starter houses. I've never heard that in my life. If you are like that, let me know because I think they are few and far between who think EA has good starter houses. On the back porch here, I wanted to do a grill and a little seating area, but a grill was not in the budget, quite sad, but I still put the eating area just so there was something out there so it wasn't so bare. I also would like to put a fence in this house since I made a back porch but not in the cards. I mean, I probably could have used debug. There's probably free debug fences, but I don't like going through debug. It's a lot of work and I just don't think it's fun. And I tried to add a few decorations here, like that flower painting, and I add a couple plants and a couple rugs. But again, we're on a budget, it's a starter, so I couldn't add that much, but I still think it looks pretty dang good. Like I'm impressed, I think it's good. And that's why I'm posting it because I think it looks nice. And like always, if you do want to download this build, there will be a link in the description to this build on the gallery, or you can just search up my gallery username Macintoshes and find it that way. I believe I just titled it as Daisy Hovel R Reno, but I think that's it. I hope you enjoyed. If not, well thanks for watching anyway. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like, comment something down below, and subscribe for more videos like this. I will see you all in the next video, for whatever that might be, bye.